Well, before we dive into the movie, knowing that Halloween is a sequel, let's quickly take a look at Halloween. Now, I know for any horror fan, this is a film that needs no introduction. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to do that anyway. The original 1978 film was actually a low-budget independent film directed by John Carpenter and produced by Deborah Hill. This was also classified as the first slasher film, which is pretty debatable when you look at films like Psycho and Black Christmas. But this movie was responsible for bringing the slasher genre into the mainstream. The film opens with the famous sequence from the killer's POV. It goes on for five minutes and seems to be a one continuous take. But after many viewings over the years, you begin to notice the cuts. Anyway, a young girl named Judith is murdered and we find out that the killer is Michael Myers, Judith's little brother. Michael? You know, if you didn't know anything about this, you would think that Michael was like an ex-boyfriend or something. But the fact that it was a little kid that did this makes it more creepy. Another thing you notice is that Michael's father nor his mother are asking him any questions like, what's going on or whose blood is that? Even when the camera pulls out, they don't even go into the house to check what happened. No, they just stand there looking surprised at their son. At least the mom put her hands in her coat pockets, it's probably chilly outside. All in all, it's a creative way to open up the film and it leaves the viewer asking questions. Cut to 15 years later where Michael's doctor Samuel Loomis, played by Donald Pleasance, along with his colleague Marion Chambers, begin to escort Myers to a court hearing hoping that he'll never be released. But they notice some of the patients at the mental hospital are outside in the rain. Loomis tries to go inside to see what's going on, but Michael hijacks the car thinks it had a helpful wrench on his hand as he proceeds to drive off. Afterwards, we find out that Michael killed a car mechanic, took his jumpsuit, and later broke into a store and stole a mask. Marv, hey, it's me and I'm nude. The original mask was actually a Don Post Studios mask taken from a life cast of William Shatner for the movie, The Devil's Reign. It was then painted white and used for the first two movies. Apparently someone still owns the original mask. These are the last few photographs I could find of it, and you can see how it's decomposed over the years. The original mask is iconic and what you instantly think of when Halloween is brought up which is why in the later sequels they look either not as good or too alien looking like the one in Halloween 5. This has to be the worst looking Myers mask in the whole series. Second worst. Another iconic thing about the original movie was the film debut of Jamie Lee Curtis, who was the daughter of Janet Lee, who herself was famous for Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. She plays Laurie Strode, who is a pretty simple character. She's a smart, kind yet introverted girl, and unlike her friends Linda and Annie, she doesn't date much. So on Halloween, rather than doing the Humpty Humps, she's babysitting Tommy Doyle, Michael stalks her, kills her friends, and the rest, as they say, is history. And yes, as shown there, after some looking around investigating, Loomis finally comes across the car Michael drove away in. And hearing Tommy and another kid Lori was sitting for, Lindsay Wallace, Loomis finally finds Michael and shoots him a grand total of... I'm sorry, how many times was it? I shot him six times! Oh, okay. He shoots him six times! And it ends with Michael escaping once again, followed by shots of the neighborhood in the dark night, and the sounds of Michael's breathing getting louder and louder, just to prove that he's out there, somewhere. You know, if you take out all the sequels, the remakes, and the timelines, and just focus on this one by itself, it's still a really good movie. Of course, as I mentioned, it brought the slasher genre to the mainstream, spawned countless sequels and imitators, and even a video game adaptation for the Atari 2600. Sure, it looks crude and you can't do much, but it's pretty interesting and impressive for one of the first horror video games ever made. Great graphics. Not to mention that Sisko and Eber talked about it on their special, Women in Danger, saying that it's different from the other horror movies at the time. One of the things a short scene can't show you is that Halloween is directed and acted with a great deal more artistry and craftsmanship than the sleaze bucket movies we've been talking about. But there's another much more important difference. As you watch Halloween, your basic sympathies are always enlisted on the side of the woman, not with the killer. Mm -hmm. The movie develops its women characters as independent, intelligent, 
spunky and interesting people. Halloween does not hate women. Yeah, you know, when I saw that scene, I must admit, I wasn't really worrying about the woman as much as I was placing myself in that closet and thinking about that killer, how I would handle it. Uh -huh. And I was also appreciating the fact that I think Halloween not only doesn't hate women, mm -hmm. but it loves film and filmmaking. That music is just fabulous. The way he starts one theme, then lays another thing on top of it, keeping the other theme, really good. Uh, also, the light coming through the slats in that mm -hmm. closet. Mm -hmm. This is a film that's sort of up. That scene is up and you're jumpy rather than getting depressed and feeling sorry mm -hmm. and feeling sorry that you're even watching it. An upbeat thing.